So what I mean by that is actually, you know, we wanted to enable all our, uh, you know, engineers who are working in our operations. We want them to go and innovate more and more. And agile development model. So basically, you know, what uh, what I mean by that is actually what happens uh, when I use some of the vendor products. So we have to wait for their longer uh, release cycles. Basically, our application needs some specific feature, but of course, you know, they have their own, you know, constraints. They cannot. You know, release it, of course, their quality and all those things. But some of the things that we wanted to handle it ourselves, then we said actually we wanted to, you know, deliver every two weeks. If the application needs a functionality, we should be infrastructure, we should be able to be able to deliver within two weeks. So that, that's what actually we got some guiding principles. Right. So what happened actually, you know, by comparing with all this, actually, you know, OpenStack, you know, we chose. Even though actually we have our you know cloud that uh, we are building in house, everything. And we chose to have, you know, OpenStack. It, it, it's a, you know, big decision as a corporate actually we took. But, you know, I, I know actually people are talking about, okay, how we are going to make it happen. You know, if you keep talking about it, how you are going to go and do that. So th that's a philosophy that we wanted to adopt. But of course, in the past layer, actually, we are still evaluating you know, some of the technologies. We, we have past, actually, it's not that we don't have it. But we whether we wanted to, you know, go and build ourselves or go and adopt some of the open sources or build, uh, you know, along with the open source community, that's the debate still going on. But actually, we already made the decision for IAS. It's not only for PayPal, it's for entire EVM companies, right? And, uh, okay, oh, oh, again, so why OpenStack? Okay, we chose OpenStack, but of course, you know, I had to go and justify, or maybe my colleagues and architects, actually, we got to go and justify management. Okay, what is it make, going to make difference? Because I'm already, my, I'm running my business, right? And, you know, we have some closely known success stories that uh, we could, uh, you know, take it to the management. Extra Commerce is one of our, uh, you know, other uh, business unit. Then uh, they are very much comfortable with uh, OpenStack. And also, you know, our, I'm coming from marketplaces. Actually, we have our dev cloud running in OpenStack, right? And, uh, you know, lots of customization capability. Actually, you know, you could do, you know, if you buy a vendor product or whatever, right? So you have to wait for a longer cycle. And if you need a feature again, you know, here you have a you know, sharp weapon. Actually, you know, it's up to you how, do you, want, how you want to use it. Basically, you know, there are a lot of customization opportunity that you could go out and, you know, you know make it maybe hack or whatever, but it's, it's meeting your business need. Then go and make it better, right? But if you, for the vendor product, out-of-box product, right? They have to, you know, satisfy all the customers because they have to, you know, make their adjustments and their architecture or whatever very carefully. But here, you know, you develop internally and then, you know, use it and then, you know, contribute back to the community. But actually, you know, we, we have conscious decision, at least within, you know, anywhere between two to four weeks, we should be able to, you know, contribute back to the community that uh, we promised to our uh, legal as well as to our open, uh, eBay software foundation as well. So basically, you know, whenever you fix a bug or whatever, you can't contribute immediately. Or maybe whenever you implement a new feature or blueprint, you know, go and contribute back to the community, right? And also, you know, it's supported by all the vendors. So whoever actually, you know, we have it in our data center today, you know, they're all being convenient. Actually, they're going to be supporting OpenStack, right? And, uh, you know, uh, it's very op uh, very active open source community. In fact, actually, I could quote in a couple of examples, actually, that we ran into. I'm being a software engineer for a long time. You know, I'm being in C, C++, Java, and then, you know, Python and, and recently, and before that, also Perl, and then, you know, C Sharp also for some time, right? So whenever actually I have some questions, actually I post it in the forum, right? Yeah, most of maybe Stack Flow or whatever, that you get, you know, everyone, all the developers are using it. So most of the time you may get the response, you may not get the response, or you have to keep waiting, or maybe you don't have choice sometimes, right? You can't get into, you know, JVM kernel and see actually what the place is going on. But here, you know, I was, uh, you know, before I just, you know, going to Cloud Expo for the same kind of presentation, I was, uh, you know, my team members actually got into some issues. I, I asked these guys, you know, go and post it in the mailing list, right? I was just following up, actually, I was going to, you know, Santa Clara Convention Center. It, it's not even, you know, an hour and a half, actually, that problem was solved. That's a very critical problem for us, actually, you know. We are able to go for production, but within, maybe in two weeks. But we are in two-year cycle and regression cycle and all those things, but within one and a half hours. But I'm, I'm guaranteeing you, if you are using a product, you are going to, you know, be using, uh, going through your customer support and the customer support guys will try out and it will reach to, you know, the developer who knows actually sometimes, uh, you know, they will know actually from the lock file or whatever, they will be able to fix it faster. But this one was fixed one and a half hours. That's what I'm saying. It's very, open, very active open source community. I've been, you know, using open source for a long time, but this one is, you know, exceeding all, all of their expectations. Right, and also, you know, we are using, it's not that actually we are using only the OpenStack as open source, we are using already Linux and then Java and Hadoop, we are very successful in that. 
And uh, of course, you know, there is no you know, hidden secret in that, okay, we are opening up you know, many doors to open uh, you know, high top talents in the industry, right? And of course, the foundation is standard stuff, right? Uh, we, we, start, we, we were evaluating in Diablo itself, but uh, we were waiting, we were holding on to our edition. Uh, even my colleague, actually Jesse Martin, also you know, talked about that in the design summit. You are holding on to that because uh, we don't want to get locked into that because some of the, uh, some gentlemen actually, you know, uh, they were raising the concerns, still privacy, but I have some insight about that. Actually, I met with uh, you know, Jonathan and Lauren and all these folks actually recently. So I, I'll give as much as possible information actually so that you guys will be you know, comfortable how we are going to address the privacy issues, maybe all the openness, whatever we wanted to come up as open stack. I have some data for you guys, okay? And the foundation, of course, we were waiting for foundation to be formed. And then we decided, okay, this is open stack. Okay, so this is how actually it looks now, what we have in the pilot that, uh, that we roll into our production. So if you look at, you know, the compute, we'll, you know, go from our hardware infrastructure all the way, you know, up, up right? So we have our compute nodes actually, you know, we are using, uh, you know, SL230s, the HP hardware, uh, Gen 8. Uh, it doesn't mean that actually, you know, we just need to use only that hardware, but actually we can use Dell or HP or maybe, you know, anyone else actually use ES. We can use any hardware, right? So right now, actually, you know, we, we chose this, but as long as, you know, any hardware it performs, actually it's not that actually bundle solution that we are going to buy in mode. So it's going to be open compute. And at the same time, actually, storage, actually, it's local storage. We don't have shared storage now. But our application, some of the applications that we are onboarding into this environment, they don't need shared. shared. Uh, and before I go there, actually, you know, what happened? What, then I said, okay, here's the open stack that we are going to use. Okay, management said, okay, how are we going to implement it, right? Of course, the executives asked me, and then I said, okay, okay. I told, okay, whenever you buy a new hardware, you are not, we are not going to buy, you know, bundle solution anymore. Right? We wanted to buy open hardware, and I'm going to use op, uh, you know, open stack under. Then I asked, okay, what's your next purchase that is coming in, in one or two months or maybe in one quarter, or, right? They told me, okay, we are buying for the Q4 capacity ad that is coming in Q4 2012. Because that's a holiday season for us. It's uh, you know, a lot of uh, you know, transactions will be coming into our data center. We want to upgrade our you know, capacity, right? They said immediately, okay, it's going to be in production domain. So not in QA or maybe staging or whatever, right? Okay, I don't get a choice because I made the commitment. Okay, but only I have in a confident that actually, you know, I have the source code, so I have my engineers, smart engineers, they can fix it if something goes wrong. Right, so we put it into the lab and we were, uh, you know, we came through, you know, two, two and a half months actually, uh, regression cycle, we tested, you know, so many things and finally we were able to make it. It's not that actually, you know, we, we can, you know, have some 10 compute nodes and then go and plug it in, it would work because we have to fit it into the existing infrastructure. That, that, that's a huge thing for us. Right, so we chose to have, you know, network, actually we have, you know, two, uh, two different switches that we use today. It's a top of rack, uh, top of rack switches, a Cisco 4948 and Arisa 7050, and load balancer is FI. But uh, our load balancer uh, management service could be using, you know, Citrix NetScaler also. It, it, it manages both. And, uh, but the API is same API. Right, and the software stack, actually, we use uh, Cobbler, Salt, and Bind, and Red Hat Linux 6.3 right now, but uh, actually we are not using Ubuntu, because that, that's our existing, you know, su supported version within our infrastructure. Because not that actually we can't go and create another image and then go and spin it. It's not that uh, we have to manage it, right? Because it's adding, um, uh, you know, complexity to our systems team. And also the KVM is our hypervisor and as used to monitor our, uh, you know, um, open stack services. And also, of course, we are using PMC also to monitor on top of this, right? And the foundational services, compute, of course, we use Nova, Swift, and then Glance, Keystone, and stuff like that. And for the load balancer management, actually, we use the load balancer as a service that is uh, built within eBay. And uh, we open sourced our design and also the implementation details recently to uh, the Grizzly Summit. And also, I was running the, you know, the entire uh, load balancer as a service design, uh, uh, design forum also for and it, it came out really well. So there were, you know, so many different uh, load balances of service uh, implementation in the open stack today, even in the Atlas LB and then our implementation, and also, you know, Yahoo had one, and uh, I think HP also had one, and we got, uh, and, and of course, the Mirantis had, uh, they implement, started implementing their own. Then actually I was able to convenience, or maybe I'll be fortunate, I was fortunate to, you know, bring all the vendors and also the players in the market to bring into the one room, actually. Guys, actually we all need to agree upon one. That would be only one load balancer, it's not eBay's or maybe Seavers or mine. And finally, we ended up, uh, you know, creating a new load balancer as a service that is going to be part of, you know, Grizzly. And, uh, you know, engineers are working on that, actually. So it, it came out well, and also it opened up, you know, a lot of uh, 
opportunity to uh, you know enhance uh, quantum framework itself to insert advanced services salvatore and one of my other team members is working on that actually along with another community members and that is really really coming out well i'm i'm so glad on that because uh, and also you know the dns as a service actually we built internally and also my colleague jesse martin actually he is uh, taking that to um, you know open source world actually he is working with a lot of other folks to make it up, make it happening as part of open stack itself right and orchestration engine so we were still had our own implementation and we we, we plan to use uh, you know heat heat is another you know sub project within open stack and it is run by Red Hat and we met with Red Hat guys and uh, in stuff, you know, we go and build uh, our own then we wanted to, you know, grow with the community itself, right? And, uh, you know, we'll be putting the resources uh, along with uh, whatever actually Red Hat has or maybe any other community member they could join that. So this is where actually the overall stack and also, you know, when you talk about uh, entry for our cloud, only two different, uh, only two entries, not many entries at all, only uh, through the PD deployment self-service portal where you have multiple stages for the PD guy. And he comes in, he develops the code in each stages, and then he, uh, he, he rolls in the code himself. But our release engineering team and then system engineering team, you know, they are going to make sure that we are going to be building the automation to make sure, okay, it's not going to break the life cycle because we need to have that 6-9 availability goals. So without that, actually, our business is not going to be anywhere. So that's very important for us. And of course, you know, we are going to have the workflow and then monitoring on top of that. And when you come to, you know, cloud is not coming for free. You have to manage it in the back end. Right, we have to onboard new hardware, new load balancers, new networking gear. All of them are going to be still managed, uh, you know, centrally Acro uh, across all the data centers. So this is what actually it looks like today, and it might change because that's what open source all about. But right now, actually, we chose to, you know, going with this. But even if we change, the changes will be minimal. All right. So what we have today, the current depl uh, deployment. Okay. One open stack deployment per data center because we don't have the global global orchestration layer like you know compute cells or whatever that uh, you know we are going to be implementing in the forthcoming phases, right? So 96 compute nodes, okay, they allowed me to put numbers also. That's good. Okay, the 96 compute no uh, node in a rack, which is a fully uh, dense uh, rack, so we could create anywhere between you know 1,000 to 1,500 VMs within one rack, right? And we have four top of X switches, two, two for production and two for management. Actually, I want to, you know, talk about, uh, talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, these two things. So open stack, right, you have a switch, and then you have your compute node, then you can, you know, form the cluster, it will work. No issues at all. But for us, actually, we have a lot of limitations within our in infrastructure and data center to meet a lot of compliance issues, right? So you can't run your management and then production in the same interface at the same time. Actually, you know, we got only 223 subnets because we have to put, uh, you know, the new racks in the same, you know, pod or whatever, right? But still, you need to use OpenStack, right? We, 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 we actually customized, you know, a lot of things, actually, in, including the scheduler as well as our VLAN manager to meet that. Actually, you know, it, it came out pretty good, actually, you know what? So I was a little bit worried, but within three, three and a half weeks, actually, we are able to do that because we got the code. Well, only thing is we got the code. Right, and we had uh, two slash 23s, so two for production, two for uh, you know management, and uh, we are supporting two flavors as of now. Actually, um, uh, so actually you know, that's another thing. Actually, so we don't want to support too many things. Maybe you know, on application team will be coming in and then say, okay, I'm running my VM or maybe compute uh, you know physical ghost on 48 gig RAM, right? And uh, you might be running on that, but you got to go and optimize your application. It's not that actually, you know, cloud will solve all the problem. The application also should solve some problem to make their application cloud enabled, right? And, uh, you know, we, we wanted to have, uh, we wanted to support only two or three, uh, you know, profile, not many. And uh, uh, utilizing existing physical L3 and firewall. So we are not changing any, anything in that, but we just, you know, kept as it is. And but actually, we are going to be, you know, playing in that as well. We can, I'll come back to that later. Mm -hmm. And then Nova, Clan Swift, and uh, we are using SX Table 3, and uh, we are in the process of moving to Falsam. Yeah. And uh, integrated with the load balancers and DNS, and then change management, of course, that's very important for us. It, it's not that actually you like, uh, you know, some code, actually, you know, you just go throw it in the production, right? So there are a lot of millions of users, 120 million users are living in that. Right. It's very important for us to actually to go through some of the existing business process also. We integrated with that and also the monitoring as well. Okay, what we learned, that's very important, right? Okay, fitting into OpenStack into the existing infrastructure, it's a bit difficult. 
it's a bit difficult. It's not, uh, you can't build a new data center, a new pod. If, if, if you're lucky enough to have that, it is easy. Yeah, I, I, I really mean that actually, it, it's easy. But for us actually, we have to meet with, uh, you know, all the existing management capabilities that we already in place. It's not that actually, you know, we can change the you know, entire infrastructure overnight, right? We have to, you know, move step by step, step by step. There are a lot of challenges, especially, you know, the meeting that, you know, production interface separately and also the, within the slash 23, you have to onboard your physical as well as your, uh, you know, VMs also on the same other space. So we have to do a lot of hacks and then a lot of tools to make it happen when you create the network or whatever go on, you know, assign your IPs or reserve the IPs in the database table. It's a database change, but still, you know, you have to make it happen. It's not that straightforward. Right, and availability zone uh, customization. When, when you look at even our rack profile, right, so we have four different switches, two for production and two for uh, network. All, all these four are different, you know, connected to all together in a different L3. So even, you know, one L3 domain is completely gone, we have other half of the rack is available for you. But OpenStack doesn't support, as everyone knows, OpenStack doesn't support out of the box, right? We customize that. Actually, we change the scheduler whenever you have, you know, minimum is actually four VMs for any application for us. And make sure that four of them are going to be distributed across, you know, four compute nodes and then four, two different availability zones in the rack, right? We have customized all of that. And plugin options for DNS and load balancers, right? So, so your compute node is coming in, then you have to go and update your DNS entries. So I don't want to file a ticket for that, right? We integrated that automatically using the DNS as a service. The DNS as a service is not only using for our uh, OpenStack. Basically, you know, we have a lot of other, uh, you know, ma management activities also in the back end operation side. Basically, you know, taking out, you know, some of the bits from the traffic if something goes wrong or whatever, right? So that's why actually a lot of people ask, okay, why can't you use, uh, you know, DNS update itself, right? But still we need a service. Say, your, uh, uh, you know, uh, your infrastructure is already breaking, right? And you want to stop all of that, right? People might, you know, the DNS may be, you know, technology might be simple, but it is very, very important for your availability. Okay, by mistake, if you reconfigure your, you know, I, I know actually there were, uh, in 2003 or 2004, there was an outage in Microsoft actually, okay? But they took two, two and a half days to fix that. But it was a DNS problem. What is a DNS problem? So you have to be very, very careful actually how we are integrating with DNS. Actually, we put a lot of effort in making that and also the load balancer also. So load balancer is a service. So you got your compute node, then you got to go and add it to the existing pools or L7 rules, modification and all those things, right? So we, we have integrated that. And the lab infrastructure, exactly. So we don't want to put anything directly into the production. We want to test. It's, it's like, you know, PD life cycle, right? Product development life cycle. You, you know, develop something, you, you know, you're changing your code and we have our CI setup. It is running, you know, every 30 minutes by default, and you know, whenever you change, you pick up the build. We, we exactly have you know, whatever OpenStack has today in our lab, right? We have our CI running, our you know, Tempest running, everything is running actually, you know, whatever OpenStack has today, even including our code review as well, right? So that, that's what we have. You know, we have a strong, uh, you know, lab infrastructure, and then OpenStack development lifecycle. Actually, I, I want to, you know, talk a little bit more about that. So basically, we have, uh, in fact, actually being a developer for a long time. I learned so many things from OpenStack development life cycle. It is one of the cleanest way of, you know, developing the code. Otherwise, you can't manage those many developers across the board. You know, there is, uh, you know, job is really, really tough, actually. But it, we have really, really good, pro, uh, you know, good process around that. So we learned that. And in fact, we are, uh, you know, some of our, you know, engineers also from the product development team, actually, they learned from that. Yeah, and continuous pipe, uh, continue, uh, pipeline also, actually, we built to automatically deploy in each environment. Right. And what is coming up for, uh, what is coming next for us? Sophisticated networking. So I got my racks and then I put it into, you know, infrastructure and I'm still using the VLAN manager. Of course, uh, you know, I'm not able to, you know, take full advantage of the investment that I'm making. Think about that, right? So you have a pod still. It's not really cloud, right? And, uh, you know, we, we can open, see, OpenStack is not, uh, you know, going to solve all your cloud problem, right? You still need to, you know, do a lot of stuff to make it happen for you. Maybe it might be good if you are completely you not know, have a different data center, you know, new data center, you know, new business, it's all good. But if it's an existing business, if you want to, you know, have migration your, uh, from your existing cloud to new OpenStack way, you have to migrate. It's not that you can, you could buy $1 billion worth of, you know, data center investment and then you put OpenStack on it, right? So you have to gradually migrate into that, right? 
So we, we, we got to solve that, and we are uh, you know, evaluating a lot of uh, SDN products, actually. So we already have Nisira working in our dev cloud, marketplace site, and uh, we are evaluating you know, a lot of other products also as part of this exercise, and we will be you know, deciding soon. Right. So that is coming up. And bare metal provisioning, our Hadoop cluster is being you know, custom built uh, provisioning today. Our entire eBay marketplaces uh, uh, search infrastructure is built uh, using our internal cloud. Right. So we, we, and also, but actually, we, we wanted to use OpenStack also for that as much as possible. And compute cells, of course, everyone knows why, why we need it. So we, are, we will be focusing on that too. And uh, open hardware spec. Yeah. So as I said, actually, we are not going to be buying the bundle solution anymore. We wanted to open the gates for all the vendors. Okay, this is the spec I want for processing my payments, or maybe processing my checkout, or processing my, you know, mails, patch process, or whatever, right? Then it opens up the doors. Actually, you know, whoever actually went to come in, if, they, if their hardware is performing, maybe Intel is coming up with, you know, something you know, cool for in the chipset itself for payment processing. Why not? So we'll just go and buy that, right? So that's what actually we wanted to openly announce. You know, all the spec, whatever. Actually, not many players in the industry are, you know, have guts to you know go and announce it. But we decided to do it because they feel that it is you know bread and butter for them. But for us, we strongly believe that our application is the you know bread and butter for us. Yeah, and uh, extend that. Uh, and uh, so we have it in the production today. But we wanted to extend the same infrastructure across the board. Actually, QA development, QA staging, and load and performance in, performance environment, and also the pre-production. And self-service and then security. Okay, so today actually whatever we have today, it's not self-service because still, I don't want to give the highs and portal to the developer, right? I know for sure they will mess up the cloud, right? So we wanted to you know build the product, uh, the PD deployment portal. We wanted to open whatever actually we wanted to open. The rest of it actually we are not going to give it to the developers at all. So uh, it's a, it's not self-service. It is being used still by our system uh, system team. And security, of course, you know, that's very important for us. That too, you know, for PayPal, you know, it, it's a big thing. So if we screw up, if I screw up actually in security, then, you know, <laughs> the uh, business is in trouble. So we are really, really careful about actually, you know, what we could do, what we cannot do, and all those things. And also, you know, I'm glad that actually we formed uh, OpenStack Security Group in the Design Summit, and that is, uh, you know, actively being involved in a lot of uh, use cases I saw, you know, um, Know, different players actually presented actually how we are going to address that, and in fact, actually we already have a process within, you know, uh, within PayPal or maybe eBay company, right? So before you know, moving any open source project, actually we ran, scan through you know different processes, different code. Actually, we have the process, but since actually OpenStack is already you know talking about that, actually it saves some of my time, and that's good for us and good for the community too. And we are going to be contributing to that actually what. You know, public cloud needs. At least for me, it's a private cloud. But actually, you know, for the public cloud operators, it's still tough because you are using the messages everywhere. And if you hack the message, okay, it's not. See, I'm, I'm, see, I don't want to have. Uh, you know, I don't want to say that. But sometimes, you know, people mess up things for you know fun or whatever. Maybe accidentally. You now, I, uh, you know, when I was playing with OpenStack, actually, I brought down our dev cloud, right? And I, one of our you know pilot uh, applications actually that was uh, it was running. They completely gone. Good that actually it was a pilot, but think about actually if it is customer impacting application, right? You lose your business. If you lose your the 69 availability that we have today, then we, we will be in trouble. I don't want to put our management into trouble or my company into trouble. So we got to be really careful about in terms of security. And migration to Falsum and beyond. So we are you know setting up uh, you know our internal lab to you know try out few things, and uh, you know we are bringing SD analysis as part of this, and we will be migrating soon in one or two months. And the design, develop, and fix, of course, you know, contribute back to the community so that uh, we uh, we committed to our uh, OpenStack software, uh, sorry, eBay Software Foundation, as well as uh, our management, our legal, whatever we develop, and we are going to contribute back to the community. So we are not going to keep ourselves, but uh, we feel that it is liable for us. We don't want to do that. It's not good for us and good for the community, right? And of course, we are going to you know set up the lab. We already have the lab. So we wanted to you know, package whatever we are using internally, right? whatever actually Cloudera is doing for um, you know, um, your Hadoop today. So we wanted to you know, fill the packages, whatever we use, we are, whatever we think it will be useful for the community, we are going to be distributing from eBay Software Foundation. Yeah. And also, you know, yeah, it is through the eBay Software Foundation that we plan to do. 
Okay, so what where community want to go? Right? Yeah, I met with Lara and, and uh, you know Jonathan and we talked about actually you know where community is going, a lot of concerns from you know previous users, maybe openness. Yeah, we, we talked about a lot, right? And in a lot of heated sessions in the uh, uh, executive board, and uh, we discussed about actually how we are going to address you know, some of the issues coming up. So today, actually, the major problem everyone is worried about. Okay, the blueprints that is coming out of uh, coming out. Basically, you know, company X likes one, Y likes one. They think actually that is the only one standard, and you know they want to make it because their product is already supporting that. Right? That's the problem. Right? Everyone is concerned about what about my company then? I'm also gold member. I'm also platinum member. Right? So what we did, okay, uh, we, we brainstormed actually, we met uh, maybe three hours, I think. The lunch, uh, the, we met for dinner actually, the dinner was two hours, but actually it's extended for four hours. That's another story, right? We keep talking and then finally, you know, we ended up in creating a stronger user community. So we are, go uh, we are still brainstorming actually, you know, how we are going to address uh, the blueprint uh, in a creation process. So it, it is going to be driven mostly from the user community. So if user is, uh, you know, if, if, uh, I think, you know, somebody, I forgot his name, actually, he was talking about, okay, eBay and uh, PayPal is coming into this, it's a big thing. It's not a, it's an easy, easy decision for us, because, you know, we came out and then said, actually, we are going to be using OpenStack. That means, actually, you know, we are going to help the foundation as much as possible with the buying power that we have, right? We, we are going to help the community as much as possible to be open, right? So where we wanted to go in the, uh, you know, the cloud actually, we, we know actually you know, OpenStack is playing in the cloud and all those things, right? So one thing that actually, you know, I, I, we have talked about one more thing also. So to take our uh, you know, OpenStack to the next level, we, we believe that actually, take uh, OpenStack to the universities and the colleges level. When the kid is coming out of the college or university, they should not talk about, okay, because a lot of people, you know, you know, Tristan, uh, Tristan was telling me, uh, telling everyone that actually not many people know the cloud or maybe the open stack. Well, everyone knows cloud, but not many people know the open, open stack, right? Why can't we take it to the universities and colleges? We are planning to, you know, support universities and colleges with the hardware infrastructure or whatever they want to, you know, put in their lab, try out cloud or whatever, right? We are decommissioning a lot of assets every two years or three years when we do take up upgrade. We are selling for peanuts, but maybe we'll, we'll, we'll give it to the universities and colleges. You go and innovate, right? Good for us, actually we could hire. And you know it's good for universities, good for the students, and you know we, uh, we are ready to that to, to do that actually. So, and uh, and if you do all this, and the cloud world will go uh, go away. For, so India, okay, I, I, basically I'm from India, right? So basically, uh, you know, when we start, uh, you know, when we go to the you know photocopy shop, we never say, okay, I want to do photocopy. We say always say Xerox. Xerox is a product. Yeah. Right? But we don't say photocopy, right? Yeah, the same thing. We are not saying, okay, I'm, I'm you know, searching in the internet. We use something else. How many, how many of us, uh, you know, talk about search engine now? We talk, you know, I, I don't want to tell because I don't want to, I should not talk about other companies, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right? So why not? Okay, but it's cloud, okay. Uh, that's why I, 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 I was able to find a uh, logo without the like, cloud software in the bottom. <coughs> Maybe, why can't we make this one as a logo for us? Actually, you know, the, the cl uh, cloud world, you know, world will go away. Right? That's where we wanted to go. Right? Definitely, you know, it's an eBay Inc. organization. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. Some selfishness, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so actually, you see, actually, we have a big laundry list to go and implement, go and solve. And of course, you know, we are hiring actively, and there's an open secret, and, um, you know, it's my contact information, my cell phone box in India also. I verified already. You guys, you know, reach out to me, and also you could check our, you know, eBay careers website also, and open. Yeah. Questions? Hello. Uh, um, you mentioned uh, open hardware specifications, right? So, uh, did you mean something that was uh, that is similar to what Facebook has done with the open? Yes, hardware? exactly. Yeah. So, 
So uh, do you uh, f uh, do you already use something that 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 was available outside, or why do you no no I, reinvent I, the wheel? Uh, uh, no. So I'll tell you actually what happened. Okay. So the rack that we bought uh, for this particular exercise, or maybe you know our uh, market places that we already use, is uh, you know based out of the open compute um, because our uh, system engineers and then our infrastructure team they actively looking at you know, open compute, right? But also, you know, I have, it's a different group actually. They're responsible to, you know, uh, come up with, you know, hardware profile for our data center based on the workload that we run in each environment. It's not that actually, you know, we could buy a compute, uh, you know, rack. It will work for your big data as well as your performance cube. We have to come up with, you know, different, uh, you know, caching layer or whatever based on the application that you are going to host. That was another challenge for us, such in the cloud. See, your application, you know, will run. But if you want to get out of the, SLA that you want to get maybe few nanoseconds per transactions, right? It's not going to scale. So you need to find right hardware. Maybe for Facebook, you know, it might be working for them as it is, whatever actually they have it in the uh, opencomputer.org. But for us actually, you know, some of the reference, we took it from there. But the one that we have, that's what actually when I say actually open compute, maybe I, we could even go ahead and then say, okay, this is the hardware profile. It is working for payments. This is working for wallet. Okay, this is working for mobile payments. We, we, we should be able to, you know, go to that level and then publish our, uh, you know, spe specification outside. Does it answer your question? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, the way I understand, PayPal has a lot of uh, other companies or organizations which integrate to your system to work. So when you are moved to OpenStack in production, mm -hmm. how easy it was or how tough it was to convince people to come on your cloud and uh, where a little more deeper insight on the security concern and uh, things like privacy or how the transaction is secured when you're putting on the cloud. Can yeah. you put some highlight on that? Uh, it's not public cloud, right? It's private cloud. It's a private cloud. But yeah. people who join to you, do you expose them your capabilities to outside or you're not? No. Okay, thank you. In your adoption to public, you know, private cloud, do you have to change your applications and can you share how much of that was a hassle? Yes, in your, exactly. Uh, IAS model and uh, what, what, what's the things that you went went? Yes, exactly. So eBay and PayPal and then they're very old companies, right? It's not, we start, uh, not that we you know, started our company. Every company has their life cycle in developing their applications. They come up with new frameworks or maybe you know, new, uh, new layer in different areas you know, to meet a you know, different technology stack that is available in the market, different resources that, you know, human resources that, we avail uh, that yeah, engineers are available in the market. It's not that actually you run your, all your applications in C or maybe you know, some of the COBOL language or whatever, right? You cannot find resources. Maybe you can find only in the museums, right? Yeah. So we, we change. Actually, every year, actually, we build new things, and uh, you know, we, we, we change our framework. And there is an application migration path also. So when you say, actually, the application, uh, see, every application team, they have their own you know, business charter, because every application running as a you know, different business unit within you know, bigger company. Otherwise, actually, you know, if there's a simple side, actually, you know, why we have 29,000 employees within even people, right? Every, you know, business unit have, you know, their own uh, VP. Excuse me, sir. No. You really are not giving it a compute, which is, you know, uh, in the olden days, a compute is given for as much as you can use. Yeah, yeah. But in this model, you're actually trying to balance your infrastructure yeah. for optimal provisioning. Yep. Yeah. And there is this DevOps movement, which is primarily looking at a SLO-based model of mm -hmm. Dev and Ops collaborating. Yep. How did that work for you? Yep. And uh, basically, the application writers were always assuming that I have everything on that machine. So if I go back to my days of computing, I was always assuming that the whole machine is mine. Yep. But that's the world which has gone away. Yep. And with cloud, there is a model that uh, you actually get what you get, and you will have to live within that uh, what you get. Yeah. So, so how does that phenomenon of um, DevOps work for you? Yeah, so basically, you know, what happens is uh, in the cloud world, actually, at least most of our applications, you know, it's self-managed most of the time, at least the capacity add and then, you know, new application rollout. 
that is self managed but we have uh, you know automation built around that that's where actually our devops folks are helping us out all the way from your uh, release engineering to your business process right so we, we are building the workflow around it right so say suppose you know i have an application you know it needs maybe 50 compute nodes with uh, you know load balancer and then firewall or whatever right maybe it might be okay for until you were q3 that is not uh, you know high trafficking time for us and then q4 is of course you know we beat, we, uh, we you know beat that recently because not that it's only long weekend is the, you know high trafficking for us actually you know there are a lot of other occasions we met today in paypal actually we exceeded our uh, you know transactions right so we Uh, hi, I am Haynes and I work for Accenture. Yeah. So I have a question regarding the technical stack you, are, you have shown. So for this orchestration as well as capacity yeah. management and even dashboard, are you using completely in-house uh, development? Yeah, so we have our orchestration engine that is in-house built, but uh, we are uh, going to be using Heat. So that's the template engine that we'll be using for the cloud formation. And what are the uh, normal orchestration activities you do? And why didn't you go for Puppet or Chef? I'm sorry. Why didn't you go for Puppet or Chef? Uh, we, we use Puppet actually. We use Puppet for the okay. configuration management. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. This is for the template. Think about it actually it is to manage your topology of your application. I need 10 compute nodes, two for MySQL, and maybe five or six for your you know, application server, two for you know MQ or whatever, right? So to manage that template actually in each environment, that's the template you will be defining, you know, to move your uh, you know pipeline. So basically, you know, so what happens today, right? You put everything into one box, okay? That, that, that's where the most complexity arises in PD world. Okay, you go and put, okay, local ghost, right? It will work. It will work. It will work all the way down to your pre-production. But it will not work in the production because it is being distributed. The simple use case, right? It won't work because and you need to have the similar environment in every stage, maybe. Pre-production or maybe load and performance may need only maybe 50 compute nodes, but your production is 500 compute nodes, right? That's where actually we want to use the same template across the board so that actually it solves many of our problem, infrastructure problem that we have today. Uh, we, are, we are running out of time. We'll take just, the next just, question during lunch probably. Like a short question. Uh, which all OS you provision in VMs? I'm sorry? <laughs> which all operating systems do you provision? Guest OS, guest OS. Oh, guest OS, okay. So uh, it's uh, Red Hat Linux 6.3 and then 5.7. Yeah, I showed in 6.3, but actually we, we support 5.7 also. Some of the applications, you know, they need 5.7 as well. But we'll be moving into Ubuntu. Okay, yeah. Uh, thanks, Anand. All right, and, I'm sure, I'm, and I'm sure all those who have some more questions are going to trouble him during lunch. We are, we are kind of running out of time. That's why we are like kind of... Next talk uh, will be from Ritesh. Uh, Ritesh works for Ericsson and uh, he'll be talking about what they're doing with OpenStack and Ericsson. Yep. Uh, I work with Ericsson as a cloud architect and uh, we belong to an innovations team. Thank you. We belong to an innovation team where we carry out innovation across uh, Ericsson in 178 countries and around 480,000 employees. So even I have my colleague here. So uh, why we are uh, choosing OpenStack for Ericsson and what we are doing with OpenStack in Ericsson. So I would uh, invite also my colleague, who is the lead architect for this. Uh, Chandra, please. Then uh, even I would join, uh, telling you about the technologies, what we are doing with OpenStack. Uh, morning. I'll just uh, quickly uh, go through some of the, a part of the presentation, and then the rest will be carried on by uh, Ritesh. So this is just yeah. a brief okay. agenda that we are looking at. It's. Uh, there are some enterprise challenges and opportunities that we are, we are trying to address with OpenStack. And then I'll just discuss about some of our interests and goals that we have and uh, how OpenStack uh, is a solution for all these uh, challenges. And then we, uh, what we are trying to do are implementations and uh, building an, uh, a cloud ecosystem and all the hurdles we faced and, of course, a, a research area that we are uh, trying to get into. Uh, as we all know that you know IT costs are always up and you know there's always a hardware cost involved and uh, data center space green energy <laughs> preservation yeah. so, so these are uh, some of the uh, very common uh, challenges that are faced by the uh, industry today so so obviously we, we have the opportunity 
by uh, you know, coming up with virtualized uh, infrastructure. And uh, <coughs> we, we also are uh, trying to come up with a pay-as-you-go-and-come uh, model, which will be explained by him. And then uh, there's, of course, a platform deployment on top of that, and then uh, a software as a service and, and automating all the IT operations. So these are some of the uh, broad opportunities we are trying to cover. <coughs> so our, our interest is, our, is, is mostly on building a complete uh, cloud ecosystem with OpenStack, using the latest version uh, Folsom, and, uh, and building on top of that uh, uh, a platform that can be used by a wide variety of enterprises. We, we also uh, productizing, uh, you know, some applications uh, on cloud that can be used for for different uh, enterprise verticals like retail, travel, and especially the telecom sector, uh, since we are working in that. And then, uh, so our, our focus is on on, on mostly, uh, you know, uh, some of the research things and, and then uh, coming up with products that can be used by the, the small and medium enterprise. And, uh, of course, there's, uh, there, there's a, a lot more for the telecom operators that we keep building on. And uh, yeah, so this is a, a, a broad architecture of our current cloud. And then, uh, so I'll, I'll just hand over to Ritesh after this. He can explain. Thank you. We are doing in it. I've been looking uh, how we can further integ uh, integrate the OpenStack into our existing environment. Like, uh, will we talk about uh, doing with our uh, customers and all those things? There has been always a uh, debate on why we should move on a cloud and all those things. So. At present, uh, in Ericsson, we have around uh, 1,500 cores which are uh, running on OpenStack, and uh, we target about creating uh, 2,000 virtual machines uh, within Ericsson. We are at present doing this within Ericsson, like uh, we support our customers on top of cloud. They can uh, provision machines, do the DevOps environments, and all those developments can be done on this top of OpenStack. So we have the infrastructure, and then we at present, we are not using any storage technology like what uh, OpenStack released this new uh, version, which is the Cinder, mm -hmm. in which it provides to make me uh, use of the different proprietary storage solutions and all those. Then we have the OpenStack cloud management layer where we use the NOAA for the computation. Then we use networking, which is the NOAA network. And uh, we have the security, identity, and access management keystone, all this in place. Then on top of that, we have our own service cell portal, which is like an orchestration layer which provides me uh, start from the order fulfillment, uh, order management to the order fulfillment and the billing parts and all those things. Then we have our hosted apps, uh, which we provide to even our, uh, within our Ericsson and even to our customers for a small and medium enterprise or a large enterprise company would need the applications to work upon. So this was the open stack, what we are doing. We have a uh, Folsom in place in our data centers, but uh, then we have enhancements in storage, like at present we are using network file systems, uh, not the any proprietary storage solution in place. So we have like MooseFS, we use MooseFS for providing a, a high availability of a storage and all those things. And enhancements in networking, we at present use no one networks. Then uh, this is used in the two case, one for the, if I talk about the Ericsson internal for the employees, then uh, we make on the basis of the VLANs where we uh, provision different departments on the basis of VLAN and they can use the machines on their uh, doing in their departments. And about the customers part, we use this NOAA network to uh, use the uh, different technologies available in the market like the MPLS and all those things to be connected to the OpenStack Cloud. So our small and inter medium, medium enterprise companies who are on the MPLS and all those things, VPNs can use this directly. Then we have launched IIS within Ericsson India. At present, it is supporting around 12,000 people in, uh, within Ericsson India, and we target about the uh, 1 lakh people all over across Ericsson. Then we have a self auditing in place, I told you before, uh, which provides all the functionality what OpenStack provides, and even top of that, we provide the orchestration layer where you can do all the things. Then we even have a product which is uh, helpful for our enterprise companies to use this. Uh, we have some of the, we have productized some of the apps which can be used on top of this open stack. Then uh, in this we provide effective ordering, reporting, provisioning, authentication. Then even uh, the past part, it is still under future expansion, but uh, I did mention we are evaluating number of uh, past vendors like Cloud Foundry, OpenShift, and Stack Auto, all those things. And below is the IIS open stack management layer. 
like uh, when we were doing this deployment, we faced a lot of hurdles which were there uh, when we started working on the OpenStack part. If we talk about the uh, high availability of the services, because uh, there was always an issue. We talk about giving any of the services, then it should be highly available across. Then we faced that issue, and even we had a solution for that in place. Then we have the networkings where we can uh, effectively use the load balancer mechanisms and all those things can be integrated into the OpenStack. Because uh, at present, the community is working very good and they even don't have the uh, time to address these issues. So it comes in the new releases and all those things. So at present, we use, we do have a solution to do the load balancing and routing mechanism features in the networking part. Then scheduler is the prioritization of the services, how we can effectively use the scheduler and all those things. So we have it in place our uh, own algorithms, how scheduling works within OpenStack. Then storage, uh, how can my data be more highly available, whether my data would be available all the times, what backup and recovery solutions I would be taking in care, and the security and assist management. Then I talk about security, then uh, that is, this is the first thing when we talk about offering these services to our customers or even internally we talk about when we say anything about the cloud like we are selling your cloud everyone who says this like uh, what about the security and all those features so we do take care of the security and all those things then we did a lot of integrations where uh, we are, as i told we are evaluating past solutions and even billing of the solutions we have a small solution of billing in place and even we have a small meters and all those things in place now we are moving uh, trying to even evaluating the metering part which openstack has now in place so uh, this is a small solution introduced what we did with the high availability part like uh, we wanted to make the services to be highly available. So we used a small stack of services uh, like Nova API, Keystone and Glance which can be made highly available using uh, the software Keep Alive and HAProxy. Like, uh, it depends upon the topology. We uh, created a lot of topology reading the rack space architectures gives me a lot of knowledge about the uh, open stack architecture, how it can be uh, deployed in different data centers, how uh, architectures I can make. Uh, if I talk about uh, providing uh, availability solution between two, di two different nodes, redundant solutions and all those things. So we covered all these topologies and we came out with a topology in which we uh, do the load balancing and even as well as to keep the services highly available. Then we have even highly available services for RabbitMQ and MySQL. We use the uh, high availability for Rab RabbitMQ as proposed by RabbitMQ only where we talk about mirroring, uh, mirroring queues then providing it highly available, load balancing those queues and all those things. Then uh, so, uh, if you talk about the monitoring part, uh, this is the most thing in which we, uh, if we talk about the deployment and all those things of the cloud, we need something to monitor them effectively about the alarms and all those things. So in place we have a monitoring solution introduced for Keystone, RabbitMQ, for the DSCP servers, NOAA services, GLANs are now effectively monitored within our solution. Now, uh, other research areas, like uh, we have big data analysis, we have what we are targeting to do further in uh, this cloud area. And uh, machine learning, data mining, scalable, how can we make more scalable our solution? Cloud data security and trusted computing is, the, I think, the most hot topic now in security, what we say about how we can make trusted computing on my loads are. If I talk about scalability, it's not just of adding on nodes. We need some more security, like trusted computing and all those features within this. Yep. I think so. I finished with this. It was a very small slide. I didn't want it to bore you all. So. <laughs> Questions? In place, which we offer to the, uh, our uh, as, uh, trusted uh, customers, like the operators and all those, and we enable them to provide the services to their enterprise customers. What kind of product have you guys? Sorry? Okay. Uh, so we have a whole uh, cloud platform uh, which we offer uh, to our operators and, uh, and the solutions like the services like the chat and collaborations, mail and messaging solutions, even some of the telecom applications like if you might have heard about the telecom applications, IMS. So we ported the IMS on VIM, uh, virtual and we offer the solution to the enterprise customers who are operators. And uh, there was a, when Ericsson started working on this was in, uh, in, in the year starting when we uh, demonstrated this whole solution uh, in Mobile World Congress. You might have heard about the Mobile World Congress Barcelona. So this was the place where we uh, hosted the solution and demonstrated and around, uh, if I say, 
there was uh, seven cloud solutions within Ericsson. They were demonstrating those solutions. This was the solution which earned uh, around 70 leads within. Uh, I have a question. Yep. Uh, how reliable is the high availability with RabbitMQ, Rabbit with Q mirroring and stuff like that? Okay. Uh, and also, does it scale? So does it scale under load? Okay. About the uh, RabbitMQ, uh, MirrorQ solution is a quite good solution if I say, like it says about uh, mirroring your, all your queues to the slave servers and you keep on adding nodes, uh, keep on adding the RabbitMQ nodes and keep, keep on making the slaves and all those things. And if somehow your master slaves go, uh, master goes down, then one of your slaves come as, is promoted as the master. And so only the master is active and everyone else is yeah, passive? It's like, it, it, if I say, it's like uh, just making your queues available in all the nodes. Like uh, you need, uh, because the queues basically in RabbitMQ are perishable. They are not persistent. When we talk about mirroring, uh, mirroring the queues, we have to make the queue, uh, we have to make the messages and the queues all those persistent. Across so the there's system. a DNS component involved as well. In yeah. Front, yeah, we can oh. implement the uh, reverse proxy or some sort of to provide the load balancing features and even top of that. Any other questions? And I'm curious, like a few slides earlier, you had shown challenges on various axes, and there was a storage axis on which you had said like backup replication and things like that. Could you possibly expand upon it a little bit? Uh, uh, like, uh, those, uh, those the storage things? where you're talking about replication, data backup. Okay. Could you possibly yeah. expand a little yeah. bit on that so that can better appreciate what's going on? Yeah. And is there some NetApp storage involved there, is, uh, over there or not? Already Sarge is there <laughs> and laughing. <laughs> we already had a talk <laughs> about this. Let's talk about it outside. Yeah. <laughs> Probably we'll talk about offline. Uh, I will tell you, like, our storage for the storage part at present, uh, we didn't did much. Uh, we wanted to make our data highly available, that's it, uh, because uh, there was no as provision for making the instance highly available and providing a story, uh, shared solution for the uh, instance and all those which are hosted on this uh, open stack. So at present, we uh, use a network file system, but we fo now focus, uh, as the senders comes in and we are on the Folsom part, we focus to uh, make uh, proprietary product, uh, storage solutions to be part of this. So we are evaluating a number of uh, solutions for it. Hey, uh, I have a question on the networking part. Mm, yeah. So what challenges did you guys really face on networking? Okay, uh, for the networking, uh, at present we are not Seeing, using... Uh, I see a lot of uh, protocols like VXLAN, mm -hmm. VGRE, blah, 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 are coming up, right? So what really is the problem you face? Okay, for the networking part, at present we are not using Quantum. We use simple uh, VLAN manager where we talk about uh, providing these VLAN connectivities to our uh, enterprise customers directly using the, like, whichever technology they use, the MPV list. So we did a lot of uh, tweaks in the code also to provide these services because uh, what NOAA does is it, pro it makes its own gateway and everything. And if, if I say in the case about the, uh, when providing this MPV list connectivity to our customers, we need to tweak, make uh, tweaks in the gateways, firewalls, then provide the uh, edge routers and all those. But is it answers your question? No, sorry. Yeah, that's going to be edge, right? Yep. Uh, so I mean, you got your. This goal. would be uh, uh, this would be integrated to our core networks, and further we offered it uh, to our edge routers. Okay. That is the thing. Like, uh, if I say I have to change some of the things uh, in my uh, every VMs would be given a different gateway, which would be outside gateway, and further they redirect to the edge uh, edge routers and all. Then further. So to you, you mean to say your whole uh, cloud networking is based on an MPLS based stuff, or? Yeah, for the customers part. We do it on the MPLS part at present. MPLS and even the open SSL VPNs and all those solutions, we even provide that. SSL VPN, okay. What you explained here is only about the software, right? Like software in the sense of the OpenStack or any other your own applications and all the required things. Uh, is there any hurdle that, that you face while updating the uh, firmware on the physical server? Like example, you may need to update the physical BIOS on a physical server or some RAID controller firmware on the physical server. So any such kind of hurdles which you faced to address the physical firmware related to the physical components, physical servers, the, any component on the server? Uh, I would say in this case, like OpenStack is quite flexible and even uh, a normal server which is available in the market can be, it can be any x86 64-bit architecture can uh, run this OpenStack. So in that case, we already had in place uh, our all uh, servers were in x86 64-bit architecture. So it didn't face as such uh, problems in this, but uh, we addressed some issues on the storage availability part in which we 
address the RAID and all those things. Okay, thank you. So, any more questions? Okay, thank you everyone. So the first slide, this is basically the cloud definition by NAST, which says what's a good cloud. Uh, you, you know, the cloud paradigm basically changes uh, the model where you have everything for yourself to actually everything is shared. And when everything is shared, what are the changes that you need and what are the layers that come? You have different deployment models, which is public, private, and hybrid clouds, and you also have um, you know, the various service models, which is actually the platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, and software as a service. And on the characteristics which you want in a cloud is primarily on-demand self-service, uh, elastic, which is primarily elastic, uh, resource pooling, broad network access, measured uh, services, and elasticity. So these are the things that you need, and this is by and large the cloud definition. And uh, from this definition, uh, you know, wh why did I show this? Uh, it, it's one standard form of cloud. Mostly when people say what's cloud, we have different answers to it. And this is one consistent definition which actually shows that. And uh, OpenStack seems to be working on that model where this is the Folsom OpenStack architecture which kind of has various services. Um, I think uh, this is not very clear. You have actually OpenStack Horizon uh, portal. You also have Cinder, which is actually the uh, storage part. You have uh, Quantum, which is primarily doing the uh, network or uh, network management. You have Nova, which is talking of compute management. You have uh, Keystone, which is primarily the identification and security part of it. And uh, there are other services which are coming in. And if you look at OpenStack, everything started with Nova. And if you look at uh, Nova Networks is bifurcating and going as Quantum. Cinder was part of NOAA volume, and now it's separating it out. And things are evolving. And if you look at the core part of uh, OpenStack, people say, what is core? You also have Glance and the Swift repository, which is also not, uh, which is there. So uh, these are things which are evolving. And uh, as what you see is uh, projects start evolving out of NOAA, and uh, it's starting to go out like that. The other initiatives which are happening inside that is Celiometer, which is by and large the metering and uh, solution. You are also seeing things like Heat, which is actually the orchestration engine and the uh, cloud uh, formation kind of APIs. And uh, there are other things. You, you are seeing interest with HPC trying to adopt to cloud. You are seeing interest from Hyperscale, which is trying to adopt to cloud. Every, everybody is trying to get cloud in that form. So uh, why, why this topic of uh, what I will try and talk about is Nova in specific and the physicalization plus virtualization and what are the forms which are existing in the market and how that will change. So that's my uh, topic of interest. Um, so if you look at NOVA, we have been talking that, uh, you know, the no this is the NOVA drill down and uh, NOVA basically has a NOVA API. It has a NOVA compute and the compute controller, uh, the NOVA API and the uh, compute controller, NOVA compute controller talks through a NOVA scheduler and the database and you have drivers which given, a comp given any form of compute, whether it's x86, whether it's a, uh, you know, a Unix or a Linux or any kind of system or any kind of compute, you could actually go and plug in that compute underneath NOVA. Okay? And the biggest change, what it does is, the way you do it is actually by writing a driver and that driver manages the last mile. Okay? So in a lot of ways, uh, OpenStack is a pluggable architecture is what we said. There are multiple points of plugin. One is, the, uh, one is the API level where you can actually extend. The second one is the message bus where you can start uh, attaching things to the message bus. And last but least is the various control points and the drivers that you can do. So if you look at quantum, you, have, you can write different L2 drivers. You can write various drivers. So same way, Nova actually has a compute. And underneath that compute, you can plug in different drivers. And all of these drivers are loaded at runtime based on the configuration of NOVA, and that's how the driver gets self-configured, and each of these can connect to the message bus. Okay? So that's primarily the architecture, and uh, if you want to keep yourself isolated, 
the, uh, the plug-in model and the driver model gives you that much of flexibility to plug in any kind of compute that you want. Okay. Uh, so let me look at compute models. Uh, you have physical servers, you have uh, virtualized servers, and you have other models, and I've listed few, which is actually uh, virtualized servers as uh, ESX, Hyper-V, KVM, and Zen server. And you have other models, which is either partitions, which is like LPARs from uh, some companies, and VPARs from uh, some companies, and also uh, container-based virtualization, which is primarily a Linux terminology, which is primarily LXC or OpenVZ. Okay? So these are models which you see in uh, computes. So if you go back in time, physicalization was all about physical servers being fully consumed for the app. So it used to be said that that's a database server, that's the, uh, you know, that's the SAP server or whatever it is. That is how we used to address the servers and that's where it started. And each of these servers were fully dedicated and they were big monoliths. Uh, if you take a mainframe or any of those models, it was a monolith which was dissected into small partitions and so on. And later it came to be x86 and you have scale out, scale in computing and various other forms. So that's primarily the physical nature of the computing. And if you look at workloads, there are workloads which are primarily very, uh, you know, savvy for, it needs high, la you know, low latency, it has, it needs response time, it needs high computing. And for example, if you look at Hadoop clusters, if you look at HPC clusters, these are things which still need physical hardware. Okay? They don't go into any model which is primarily virtualized. Uh, the world, when, what is the drawback of virtualization? Virtualization gives you a lot of optimization. It puts a lot of VMs onto the same machine and you can use uh, the flavors that you want, but it's not near physical. Okay? Your IO is not near physical. Your uh, storage bandwidth is not near physical. Your compute is not near physical because somebody is interpreting it for you and it's not a near physical performance, and hence you have a challenge of latency, you have a challenge of few other problems which come with it. Now, uh, having said that, that these are the problems which are there with virtualization, however, applications which don't require a very high, uh, you know, which, which is non-tolerant to, which can, tolerate, which can be tolerant to some of these models can actually adopt to virtualization, and they really work together very well. Uh, the advent of virtualization has seen of optimizations in the industry and uh, you can actually have abstractions of uh, true cloud. You can actually have a resource pool which is collected together so that you can have, you can start playing, instead of calling it a single host, you can build a cluster and then start placing VMs on it and then you get a lot of models around it. And what virtualization has also pushed us is we always have, where does your uh, OS reside, where does your things reside? Everything is structured and such a way that everything is tied. The virtualization has pushed into a model something like it's a shared nothing model where nothing is shared and you could do a migration of a VM across any host to any cluster or you know you can do storage live migration, you can do various other migrations and that gets you a shared nothing model. Okay? And a shared nothing model kind of gets you a portability of the particular VM across anywhere to anywhere and your whole model of HA is completely dynamic and it has changed the paradigm out there. Now, having said all this, uh, the physical model is also evolving. The physical model is not something that is stagnant. It's not dead. Uh, so even today, we want our database servers on physical. We want other things on physical. But how is physical shaping up? Uh, physical is shaping up in such a way that you can have, uh, with the advent of mobile phones, with the advent of various other things, processors are getting more power savvy and one of the challenges of any data center is OPEX. Okay? Power seems to be the key concern and that's how it's shaping. So you will see a lot of servers which are coming for a specific type of workload. Okay? And this, when you say specific type of workload, you might even see a Calcida processor for a web type of workload or a search type of workload and a lot of processors which are tuned for the type of workload and it actually consumes one-fifth or one-tenth of a power what virtualization can otherwise not do. So if you have a physical hardware, even with power cycle management, you can't say that given a one VM running or 20 VMs running, you can't control the power to the granularity that you would want to. And this is what is shaping physicalization, which is an anti-paradigm to virtualization, which is actually starting to get a lot of physical servers which are made for made for the type of workload that it runs. 
and this is a paradigm shift which you are seeing and physicalization is a reinvigorated phenomenon which is trying to get in there and if you really want to play around with something I think TriStack offers these uh, physical servers which are actually small and nimble which you could use for the type of workload that you want okay uh, there are a lot of scale out computers which are coming out uh, which is actually trying to give you a, a processor which is made for what your workload is rather than uh, buying a huge server and then saying that you, you know we all try to say how much can I use that capacity okay so these are paradigms which you are seeing as changing and uh, while everybody is bidding on virtualization there seems to be a reinvigorated interest in physicalization and the topic of choice is primarily to look at these two paradigms and how it is happening and you have a third paradigm which is not virtualized uh, which is which is called near physical but not physical which is something like your LXC or container based virtualization which can give you pass through IOS which can give you pass through certain things of it and even virtualization there are some vendors who give you pass through in that model so that you can get pass through IO you can get to pass through disk access and stuff like that uh, but the competition to go near physical and how you go physical is a model that is evolving and you will have to see how these things shape up in the future and I believe this is an area which is of great interest to see which one wins and uh, I believe there is a market for all but that's where the physicalization and virtualization and these paradigms will actually shape how compute will shape up in the future okay so that's primarily the introduction of what's happening in the market and how things are shaping and uh, my next model is to show how a NOVA is fully architected and how NOVA can be uh, looked at so in this model the NOVA actually has uh, different drivers and if you want to support different hypervisors you actually have a KVM host which actually has a libword driver and you could write a libword driver and that gets you a KVM adopted into the OpenStack community while your API remains the same and then you actually write a libword driver to adopt it to support KVM the same way when you want a VMware uh, driver you actually write use a VASDK APIs and then write the last mile which is actually the driver which helps you make the ESX adapt to OpenStack and same way if you want a Hyper-V host you do a WMI driver and that WMI driver kind of gets you uh, these technologies enabled and then you have a whole, you have something like this which is actually a OpenStack model which actually has various VMs and you could actually have all of this integrated into a single cloud so here I'm trying to show a Zen a Hyper-V or a KVM Hyper-V and a, a ESX in this model and uh, this is something which we have working and it is uh, it's, it's available in Grizzly uh, the only thing which was not there uh, before Folsom was uh, ESX and that's also available as we speak so the only change between the three hypervisor models ESXi doesn't have anything that you can land on the ESXi because of which you need to have a VM which is running on top of the ESXi and that will be your compute node which is the NOVA in all other cases the compute node can be installed within the hypervisor so that uh, it runs within that and uh, you, you can see Cloudbase is the company which offers the hypervisor uh, model for Hyper-V and uh, KVM is, is ready to go and you also have Zen server in the same model. Uh, so OpenStack also has support for LXC. OpenVZ is something which is a blueprint which is available in uh, Grizzly. So that covers the entire gamut of various things. Now outside of this uh, there is also bare metal deployment which is a area which OpenStack is pretty much interested and there are various blueprints and there are various tools which actually help you do bare metal deployment. Uh, some of the bare metal deployment choices are you know you have crowbar, you have uh, you know chef, you have puppet, you have uh, uh, metal as a service, you have juju and all of these are solutions which are actually trying to give you bare metal deployment. However, there is a blueprint for uh, in OpenStack for basic bare metal deployment, which is trying to say what are the technologies that they will do and how no one will actually evolve to that. I'll talk about it in a few seconds, but all of these technologies, you also have Dodai deploy, which uses, uh, you know, 
which uses uh, Puppet Master to actually build a technology which is for uh, building Hadoop or HPC clusters at one shot. So those are models which you are seeing and all of this are primarily to enable uh, beyond IAS and actually look at certain levels of uh, fast layers so that you can actually start stitching a cluster in whole rather than a infrastructure as a service and stop there. So these are models which you are seeing and uh, so these are the list of features which across each of these hypervisors which are supported and if you look at it, it will cover all the way from uh, you know, uh, creating a VM, deleting a VM, so making it pass, making it run and all of this is available in the community. So you can do a snapshot, you could do a cold migration, you could do a live migration, you could do NOAA networks, you could do SIN, you know, iSCSI attach and so on. So all of these features are, as we speak, available and the extent of support and the extent of hardware support is what is different. Okay, so why do you believe that OpenStack should, will survive is primarily because the driver model and the plugin model where any person who wants to write the driver for the last mile of the type of hardware he wants that will actually help him, okay? So this is the list of features which it is supporting. And last but least, a physical bare metal provisioning. This is a base level architecture which primarily, and most of the tools which are available today kind of either uses this basic technology and there is a blueprint which is available which is being worked on. And uh, there are various tools, as I said, which is actually available which uses this basic constructs. So what do you have? You have actually a bare metal driver, you have a power management tool which is primarily IPMI based which can actually power on and power off the node. You have a pre-boot environment which you can actually, which has some network services enabled and uh, you pre-boot through that and then use the bare metal service to actually pull the image that you want to pull down and then install on it. So this is by and large bare metal. Uh, what most of the, whether you take it crowbar, whether you take, uh, you know, the um, the mass or any of these, they use this basic constructs and but by and large they have their own implementations to it and that's how they do it. So the one of the aspects which is really, why is this very important? Because they want to give physical servers as infrastructure as a service on the longer run and especially with workload aware, uh, you know, smaller uh, computes or compute nodes which is made to, for a type of workload this model will actually evolve and there is this terminology called metal as a service and you will see metal as a service emerging out and uh, it's over time we'll see whether virtualization wins or what type of uh, market wins what and metal as a service and uh, other forms of services which is primarily for physical models will stay is another way of saying it and uh, there is this various paradigms which you are seeing one is virtualized environments one is uh, semi-virtualized or, uh, you know, container virtualized environments and then this physical environments where hyperscale needs are primarily towards physical environments and how this will evolve is what we'll see. So this is pretty much what I had for talking and this is all about doing an intro of uh, what are the paradigms which you see in physical and virtual. Okay, um, we can take questions or uh, look at it. about this database uh, you said that the d database server will uh, will lie on the physical uh, infrastructure so I just wanted to know will this infrastructure be outside the cloud or be a part of the cloud it can be part of the cloud and okay. that's where uh, if you look at what you are trying to do is uh, you can have a mix of virtual and physical as a service okay. okay so when you want a service 